Yes. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the December um, Hong Kong Philatelic Society and Hong Kong Study Circle uh, joint meeting uh, on Zoom. Um, as usual, I, I'd like to thank uh, the Federation of Inter-Asian Philatelists for, Philately for sponsoring the, the, the meeting. And um, as, as this is the, um, the last meeting of uh, uh, 20, uh, 2022, and oh, and um, we shall have uh, some more uh, fabulous uh, presentations uh, lined up next year uh, with uh, 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 different themes and subjects uh, suggested by members. So, um, well, for the last meeting, we are going to talk about the Hong Kong postal slogans and government slogans. Um, okay, so uh, well. Uh, you can find a lot of these uh, uh, slogans um, as, as, as the canceling, replacing the wavy lines, killing lines, uh, canceling the stamps. And they were specially made. Is um, the, the early ones are uh, they were was a uh, steel die, oh. and um, a steel die, and uh, and 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 then of course uh, late, I think in the. Uh, Nine, in the in the 1990 uh, in the 1990s, they um, they beginning to install a, uh, a like an inkjet printer at the AMC office, uh, the AML Center office at, at the uh, 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 Hong Kong International Airport at Chat Lap Kok, uh, where the uh, the actual uh, slogan is actually uh, like like a like a ink printed by inkjet printer, so it actually saved a lot of money because um, as you know. Making a steel die <laughs> into a, a, a to a, a, a universal uh, cancelling machine uh, was uh, uh, quite expensive, um, and they have made more than one. And uh, with, with the with the computerized uh, sort of inkjet uh, a printer, you can actually have any kinds of design uh, possibly can, and and then and just just I don't know how it works because I've actually never visited the AMC. Um, uh, 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 mail center, but um, it's pretty cool. So um, anyway, I hope somebody's going to talk about that. Um, anyhow, um, I think Richard's here already. Uh, Richard, are you here? Uh, yes. Yes, good. Uh, because I think you've got some earlier materials to show before us. So uh, would you like to start first? Yeah, I think um, basically Chris Norton asked me to uh, do something for him, which was a sort of Sorry, display he did locally. And uh, I thought that it might be good to start off with that. Yeah, Ooh. very good. Yeah. You'd like to share your screen now? Yes, just give me a um, Let's see where he is. Can you can you everybody see this? Yeah. 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 I'll try and put I'll try and put my Chris Norton voice on. <laughs> uh, this this sheet shows the uh, nineteen eighteen by war bonds, the First World War, of course. And um, with an example below, uh, postcard from Indochina in June 1918, with an example of this slogan. Let me see whether I can. Is it, uh, is, it, uh, is it a rubber rubber hand stamp, you think? It looks like it, yeah. Mm. Um, second one is the British uh, Empire Fair in 1933, uh, which was held in the... Mm -hmm. 
Peninsula Hotel, and then the, the area outside the Peninsula Hotel. I think I think it's the area that they put pavilions was where the Sheraton is these days, Sheraton Hotel, uh, which was for many years a car park, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was opened on Empire Day, the 24th of May, 1933. And was actually, it was the second such uh, fair, but the year before there was no slogan uh, handstand. And that, at the bottom is a private, uh, produced adhesive for Peninsula Hotel. I think a few meetings ago, someone, my memory is so pathetic, can't remember who, um, was asking about this type of adhesives and their period of usage. Well, this one was overprinted, as you can see, with the British Empire Fair, May 1933. So. Hopefully that's helpful. The next one, which uh, at some, some time I, I'll duplicate it with my own voice, my own presentation, is the Remember British War Organization Fund for 1939. In fact, this particular example from Felix Villas in Pop Fulham, um, is one of the earliest dates I've seen. So it's nice, nice example. Uh, I'll explain more about the this slogan handstand when I do my own my own one later. But a nice example of what was the uh, the first handstand in the second one. This was a, a later uh, version, same British War Organization funds uh, coming in from uh, China. These were in, from, the first one was up in the end, towards the end of 1939. This one was sort of early 1940, but just starting at the end. Then, although this isn't a slogan, uh, the, the label, again, I, I will mention this one a little bit more, a little bit later, um, but these appeared on outgoing mail uh, throughout, throughout the uh, war, wartime period from June 40, basically onwards. This is a 20 cent surface mail sent to uh, London, 20 cent. And the other uh, wartime slogan, again, apologies for repeating later, um, was the Buy Bombers. Uh, Chris mentions here that uh, he thinks it probably came from South China Morning Post uh, sponsoring this uh, buy bombs campaign. In fact, that's uh, completely correct. It was actually, I think, referred to as the South China Morning Post Buy Bombers Fund. Um, in, in fun. Nice envelope. Burglar alarms. Well, they're probably coming quite handy round right about there. Well known V for Victory uh, hand stamp. Again, a little bit of a repeat later, but as I said, this is Chris's local display, which I'm sure went down very well. Um, it was only in use in the period the 7th to 21st of August. 
uh, on outgoing mail, stamped in the GPO. Um, Chris mentions the second smaller type that was, was uh, noted by Webb, but uh, I'm not sure whether I've ever seen one of those covers, but I'll leave that open for later. Then we move on to the sort of slogan type cancels much later in the piece. And this was the 1951, the first time that slogans were produced for the Hong Kong products. There's the, an example of the slogan put into the machine in the GPO top and at Kowloon Post Office at the bottom. Closely followed by the 10th, the following year, at the end of 1952, again, with um, Hong Kong products, slogans in Hong Kong and Kowloon. For the 10th one, then, they apparently they were put into the machines on the 10th of November. So the, the one at the top was closer to being an earlier, earliest one. He also puts in the, uh, the 12th exhibit in 1954. And again, Kowloon, Hong Kong. And these were put in much earlier than previous years. They were first put in the machines in August. And the one at the bottom is towards the end of September, but they, they were apparently put in in early August. The 13th uh, exhibition, 1955. Again, these were placed in machines on the 22nd of August. So the one at the top, which is in Kowloon, is the 29th of August. So that, that's quite an early, an early example. And I'm sure, I think, uh, Andrew will explain all about the different type, types of cancels. This one was a change from previously in that it had two lines, one at the top and one at the bottom. Moving on, the 15th was in 50, 1957. Uh, they were uh, slogan appeared in uh, September of that year. So the one at the bottom was one week after they were first thought to be introduced. Top one interesting cover for Ingo to Ghana, one of his dead countries. Wait, I need it. <laughs> I could contact Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I've got Gold Coast, but I don't have Ghana. Ah. And then this one, moving on some period later, 1967, with a different design. We'll let Andrew talk about that. Then this is the blood donor campaign in 1953. I think in the articles that I, uh, we put, I put into the study circle journal, then quite a number of these are, are dealt with, uh, with examples, but these two nice examples here. And this one slogan was put into use in early February, about 5th of February. And the top one is the 16th of February. Well, what's something here? And then 
finally, the traffic safety campaign, which was first in 1955. Uh, it was introduced between the 14th and 27th of December. So these uh, two covers are the first day usage at Hong Kong and Kowloon. Strangely, the one at the bottom has two, two strokes of it. Different machine. Maybe, yeah. 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 Oh, no, no, it's not. It's not. Uh, yeah, but two different machines, but one has got the slogan, the other hasn't. It has just got the killer bars. Yeah. Yeah. The, yes. The, this one. Yeah. With, with the wavy lines is the standard type one. But then underneath it here, mm. which must be going in this direction. Yeah. <laughs> Um, is the same one, the traffic safety campaign. And this this uh, slogan reappeared in uh, the following year. Okay, that's okay. my Chris voice uh, completed. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks, thanks very much to him. Yeah, great, great display. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So. The, uh, the 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 early hand stamps are pretty hard to find. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, he he was hoping that somebody's going to show the the first one, the tombola. tombola. <laughs> but yeah. we, we live in hope. I don't think there's too many of those floating around. No, no, no. Um, would you like other people to to uh, do their thing now, or would you like? No, I think you better continue automatic. because you've got you 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 want to elaborate on some of uh, of the Chris's uh, covers. Okay. So why why don't we I... uh, continue? Okay, let me see if I can do that. Okay, last time I tried this, I made a terrible mess, but uh... All right. Um, can you see that? No. Oh. Oh, my word. Technology has left me behind. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what we can do. Hmm. Right. Can we see this? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Right. Um, so all I'm dealing with here are the World War II uh, slogan cancellations. And uh, of course, the one that I'm showing here is not a slogan. Um, it's the label that I think we're all familiar with. Um, it was reported uh, in June 1940 that a local label had been issued by the British War Organization Fund, BWOF, and the design as we can see, is a warship, uh, infantrymen, and aeroplanes in flight uh, with a Red Cross and British War Organization Fund. 
at the top left. The, the interesting thing here is the spelling of organization, which I notice, and I'm sure other people have, is an Americanization. It's not the English version of the word organization. This may be explained by the fact that uh, it was designed by Mr. George Arnold of the Standard Vacuum Oil Company. And I believe that he was American. And they were printed in sheets of 20, uh, four by five, and rouletted, as you can see here. And they were sold for two cents each at uh, premises such as um, Millington's, which was a stationer's, and Kelly and Walsh, which, which we're all familiar with. And then for use on the back of envelopes, and the money went directly to the BWOF. And it was used from mid-1940 onwards. Excuse me, Richard. Um, where did the BWOF money go to? Like, what did it go to the government or to directly to the military? No, it was. It, my understanding is that the fund was administered by a committee, um, so, uh, which was essentially a Red Cross. Um, Red Cross um, run. So it, it went into this, the coffers uh, run by this committee, and then it went uh, uh, periodically uh, back to the UK. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, just as an, uh, an add-on, uh, Chris sent me his uh, exhibit, uh, display exhibit uh, in a different format, but he also sent me separately this um, Hong Kong products exhibition uh, stamp. It's not a postal slogan, um, but it is the year before the first slogan appeared, the ninth. This is <laughs> the eighth. And he wonders whether anyone has uh, seen these, this type of particular one or other ones. So he'd love, love to hear anything about those. Mm -hmm. Moving back to wartime, then this is the Remember the British War Organization Fund. Uh, note the organization with the letter S, which is the Engl Engl English version. Um, and there's two separate uh, subtypes uh, with different size letting letters. My particularly pathetic uh, eyesight. Uh, I find it quite difficult to see them between the two, but one is apparently larger letters and smaller letters, especially from scans. So Proud had the earliest dates, 22 and 23 October 39, and then the smaller lettering one finishing it 7th December, and he had a date of 2nd of January 1940 for the larger lettering, HS6 type. So I've put together here uh, one or two examples. So the bottom right is the earliest one that I could find uh, for the 24th of October on a local co cover uh, sent from the Jockey Club to the Kowloon Bowling Green Club. Uh, which is on Austin Road. Um, the inter one of the side interests of these covers is that Met, this particular slogan and others were only um, used on mail being delivered in Hong Kong. So either local mail or incoming mail. And therefore, you you quite often get 
uh, all the postman beat marks, which are another obsession, semi-obsession of mine. Um, but uh, for interest, I put down and against each one what the uh, postman beat uh, was. So the top left one is uh, 6A, which is Happy Valley. And uh, the bottom right one was K4, which was Austin, Austin Road, Calhoun. And these two are a bit later. So the one at the bottom right is the latest one that I know of. And here I have to say a big thank you to BM Wong and John Tang and company uh, for helping me out with some of these uh, covers. So thanks very much to them. So the bottom right one is the latest one that I'm aware of. And you can see that the, uh, the chop is starting to get a little bit the worse for wear. It's like distorted. And that's later than the proud dates, but no doubt somebody has one, one later. Um, and the top left one is into Kowloon Tong uh, on the 30th of November. So that's quite, quite a late one, but not the latest. The next markings were HS, Proud's HS7 and 8, which were the Are You Supporting the British War Organization Fund? And here again, we've gone back to the Americanization uh, version of organization. Two subtypes with different size lettering. Um, used earliest date from Proud, so the smaller one was 22nd of December through till 20th of May, 1940. And with the larger one, he has 13th of January, 40 as his only date. So top left, we have a local cover to the Union building, which was in Central uh, with an E13 postman beat marking. So that's one day earlier than Proud. And on the bottom right is um, an envelope from Hong Kong side to uh, Shell House uh, in Central uh, to the Asiatic Petroleum Company. And that is the 17th of August, which is considerably later than uh, Proud's record. Top left, we have uh, one coming in to the Asiatic Petrol Company uh, from Taipo. But the chop was uh, struck uh, at the GPO, of course. And then on bottom right is the 15th, uh, 13th of January, excuse me, uh, example from Kowloon City through into post office building. Uh, excuse me, Richard, is this a yeah. large type or small type? I think the one on the bottom right is the only known large type. Oh, is it um, large? Type? Okay. Yeah. And the one at the top left may very well be the large type too. But mm -hmm. I, I need someone <laughs> like Simon Simon to analyze all of these things because I'm use I'm pretty useless at that sort of thing. He's much better. Now the one interesting aspect of this slogan, which may be news 
to us uh, is that it was reported in the middle of March 1941 that this slogan reappeared, but in a green, blue green color. But personally, I have never seen such an example. The next, this slide shows the, what I uh, refer to as tuberculosis slogan. It's a Chinese character, obviously, and proud type HS10. And he only had one example on the 7th of July, 1940. And thanks to, to BM and John, uh, I've managed to put together one of one or two uh, extensions to this. Uh, in fact, there are two subtypes of this uh, slogan with different characters. The first one is shown here with a rough translation by the sender from Macau. And this one is dated the 5th of July, 1940. So incoming from uh, Macau. And it's struck in a bluish green. The second tie, uh, which was received in Kowloon on the 9th of October, 1940, has different uh, characters and a different, uh, slightly different uh, translation. Moving on uh, to the Bai Bombers. One which was uh, produced on behalf of the South China Morning Post Bomber Fund. All the all of these uh, slogans were chopped at the post office. Going back to the labels, they were private. You put them. You put them on yourself and when you were post before or whatever, when you were posting your letters. But these chops were applied at the post office. There was some debate as to whether they were some years ago, but I think it's fairly obvious that they were. The Bi Bombers, which was a proud type HS11, he recorded it from 15th of April, 41, through till the 1st of November, which was the first day of issue of the eight cent adhesive. And an example of that dated 1st of November is bottom right. Peking Road, which was uh, K2. And then the top left uh, is dated the 9th of April, which is an official paid cover. Uh, difficult to know whether it was sent officially because uh, everything's been crossed out, but uh, so who knows really. But it seems to have come from the radio, government radio office uh, to uh, Stanley Terrace, which is up mid levels, um, with a 24. Postman beat. So that one is uh, six days or so earlier than the proud example. Right. Is, is the, the left hand, uh, Richard? Uh, yeah. There's one. The left hand cover is quite interesting because it says there is no delivery charge except to peak delivery yeah. to 20 cents. So yeah. I just wonder how they, how they actually collect the 20 cents from the peak resident. 
you did it actually put the postage steel stamp on or <laughs> yeah yeah good question good question I'm, i don't know and i it's, it's rather rather strange if it's official paid yeah why uh would there be a delivery charge it's a bit weird actually doesn't make too much sense really mm. Unless you're trying to stop people sending or stop, I mean, the wireless and telegraph office presumably was issuing just licenses or maybe asking people to pay up for their annual license. So I, I don't really understand why that this particular note would appear on a standard um yeah. envelope yeah interesting right movie they figured residents of the peak could afford it <laughs> should have been about, should have been about twenty thousand cents or something <laughs> <laughs> no, this is actually it's a, it's a telegram envelope i think because it, the chinese actually mentioned about uh, the, the telegram yeah yes Yes. So it should contain a telegram inside. Yeah. But we still come back to the why, <laughs> why if it's officially paid. Yeah. And then you need to collect, if it's addressed to, to the people, you need to pay 20 cents. That would, well, obviously. Maybe it's, it's maybe because it's. Because you have to get a big tram or something, go up to the peak. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's possible that it was paid officially and therefore it was collected. Someone, the government paid it and then you paid the government or something. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting right. stuff. Right, moving on. Victory V, uh, which we mentioned uh, in Chris's. Uh, presentation known from 7th of August through till the 21st but uh, and here we've got examples from the first day and the last day first first one top left through to the USA surface mail and then the bottom right 21st of August also uh, surface mail, but to England, but it also would have gone via the States. You think it's the same uh, chop or, or different? Or there must, will there be more than one? You're, you're talking to a blind person. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, I, I, would have, I would have thought they would have to have more than one. Yeah, more than one. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, because the number of desks, I mean, with chaos, mm. you know, airmail desks, um, um, registered desks. You know, I, I can't believe that there was only one, but yeah. there's never been any any real analysis no. of okay. different types sub or subtypes of these slogans. As I mentioned earlier, the tuberculosis one. I don't I don't know, but I don't think that apart from a small circle of people, it was known that there were two different types. Certainly not not being published before. Yeah. Well looking at these two, I mean you can see that the, the right hand one, I mean the uh that left leg is, is actually short a little bit shorter. So it yes. looks different. Yes. But also different ink color yeah 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 but these i mean that both of those things can be explained away uh sometimes you know aging uh, you know yeah yeah sure. please strikes and all that kind of thing but i think it would be interesting if someone has a whole load of them yeah particularly particularly different you know like airmail or um surface to have a look at 
the different if there were differences between the strikes on the airmail ones and the surface ones because that that would seem pretty obvious yeah but yeah i think a job for someone mm. well, yeah. well done yeah. simon <laughs> never been studied before yes for sure yeah yeah, yeah. And besides yeah. the slogan, the right cover is addressed to uh, Villiers David Esquire. And there's a lot of, of uh, correspondence to that name post-war and even into the early Elizabethan era. I have a bunch of Villiers David covers. Right, right, right. Well, uh, the company down the bottom is the David company of, of whatever so i presume it's a long-standing commercial uh, entity but it, very interesting good um one other aspect of these uh covers is that it's either extremely rare or doesn't or doesn't exist what do i mean i mean there are two days in the range from 7th to 21st, that I've not been able to find anybody with examples. And they're the 13th and the 17th. Now, the 17th was a Sunday, which is uh, perhaps understandable, but the 13th was a Wednesday and just a normal working day. So if anybody's got those, then... Uh, Please let everyone know. Mm -hmm. And that's just about it. I've got one more uh, slogan. Oh. Um, <laughs> and that's my personal slogan. So I'll just take the opportunity to say uh, Very good. Thank you. greetings to everybody. I Thank hope everything goes well next year. Thank you very much. Hi, Hi. Richard. Uh, Richard. Yes. Uh, can you go back to the page with um, the cover having uh, the title cancel? Yes, this one. Um, yeah. This is a pre-printed envelope. Yeah. Who, pre who prepared this envelope? What, what do you think? I've, uh, well, I've seen quite a lot of these, uh, Simon, and I, I I'm not sure, but I always thought that they were produced by Asiatic Petrol Company mm -hmm. uh, themselves. Yeah, but but you, you can see that it was mailed in Taipo, and there uh, there is some Chinese characters in in red ink. Uh, it is uh, some uh, letter agency or mail agency, I suppose. Well, why, why, why did the uh, originator of the mailers send or uh, pass the mail to such kind of uh, agents for posting? My uh, oh, uh, very good, very good observation and question. But I wonder whether there were employees living out in the new territories. I think the Asiatic Petrol Company, its head office was obviously in Shell House in uh, Central. But mm -hmm. the main facilities were out in Castle Peak. Mm -hmm. um, so I've seen correspondence coming in to people, mm -hmm. people out in uh, Castle Peak to the uh, Asiatic Petrol Company. But I, I could only think that this was mailed from uh, presume, maybe an employee or whatever, and was handed in at the stamp, uh, the local stamp uh, vendor agent. What kind of business do they do? Did they do? The agent, oh, a, the, the, the a, APC, yeah. I think it was uh, petroleum industry. Mm. Petroleum, does it include the uh, kerosene, selling kerosene? Uh, Maybe, 
Yeah. We're probably not LPG at that time. No. <laughs> <laughs> but probably kerosene, you know. Yeah. I just wonder yeah. whether these these envelopes were were sent to various different mm -hmm. uh, 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 subscribers, so called, for their for the fuel, and they they they, they sort of send money back, you know, for payment something. Maybe, yeah. I, I'm really not sure actually. Yeah, but this but, is red. There's a red hand stamp on the on the on the. Uh, <sighs> On the envelope on the right hand side, it, it, it yeah. certainly looks like uh, from another company that is sending stuff back to the uh, the APC. I think uh, the like the the these stamp vending uh, agencies were shops mm -hmm. usually, uh, particularly in the new territories, yeah. who uh, where. Yeah. There, there was limited uh, post office. So this probably was handed in at the the uh, shopkeeper agent, and then uh, taken to uh, or collected by the postman and uh, dealt with at uh, type of. Branch post office. Hmm. I wonder whether this is uh, the forerunner of the sort of the, like the commercial um, envelopes, you know, the ones with postage prepaid with the uh, with the with the two black lines, you know, that uh, like yeah. like credit cards and things like that they, they sent out, and uh, so that people can send payment back uh, without paying postage. Hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, I think. But yeah, there's uh, a, according there's, to the postal regulations, I, I suppose monies could not be sent via post. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> I have to look through my through my uh, other covers. And and your next page or the, the next next one is having another envelope. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, this one also sending yeah. to Asiatic Petroleum. Yeah, yeah. But well, this one came came from Macau. Yeah, and you can and you can see on the back here where this was actually an Asiatic petrol company, blah, Hong Kong. This crossed out, and Macau is written underneath. Yeah. So same same sort of thing. What? To, uh, to maybe, maybe a, a collector of the letters uh, sending mails to himself, collecting different stamps or postmarks. Possibly, because there's no, it's no, uh, whoever received this in the PO box or shell house or whatever. There's no uh, individual named on these covers. So they must know uh, who, who it was for. Yeah, okay. Uh, going back to the one with typo, uh, because uh, at that time, um, you, as, as I uh, communicated with you, uh, typo post office, uh, in fact, was in uh, Hong Kong Road, uh, which is quite near to the, the center of the typo market. And yeah. uh, unless the sender, uh, was uh, located very far away from from mm. Taipo Market or Taipo or Taipo Town or in, 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 in villages. Otherwise, if he or she or, or that company uh, was uh, within the Taipo Market, I I, I believe the, the distance between that shop and Taipo Post Office uh, was quite near. Was not that far. So I uh, yep. and yep. Uh, yeah, I, I that that means he or she could have. Uh, walk to the post office to, to send the mails by himself or herself. Yeah, I think um, some somewhere I have the delivery, but that was post post war. Mm -hmm. Also in nineteen late nineteen thirties. Mm -hmm. I can have a look. But mm -hmm. what does the red uh, characters actually say? This is the name of a shop. What's the name? 
，如果，如果。But it doesn't say、uh, where it is. No. Okay. Cool. The the shop apply is uh is like a name chop on the envelope. Yeah. It's like that. This is you know this letter it is from us. Yeah. yeah. But why? I mean you know that's but that's why my my theory just I just wonder whether whether this shop is actually se selling some of their products and they were. The, the, uh, the way that uh, mail was handled at that time in the New Territories was there were Typo and Yudlong uh, were the big uh, post offices, as it were. And then there were a lot of vendors, shopkeepers who sold stamps and acted as unofficial post offices. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess that this guy or person was、uh, one of them.、Hmm. Richard,、uh, what、yeah. about what about? I mean, to me, those preprinted envelopes are for payment、yeah. to Asiatic. It's customer paying them.、Mm, That's、yeah. why they get three.、Uh, you know, just to send back your money or something. So、yeah. that is, to me, that's why they were printed in the first place. Yeah, that's where I would think they、yeah. were printed for a special purpose, and is for that to return payment from、mm. customers. But in the in theory,、uh, Simon said, "You're not allowed to send money in the post." Yeah, may not be money. It might be an order. I don't know. Yeah, maybe purchase yeah, yeah. order. Yeah. So Maybe, yeah. actually, yeah. actually, in,、uh, in I mean, to me, when I saw that, I thought it was handled, handled somewhere else. Does in, in the black back flap, does it have the like the Macau one that has the Hong Kong cross out on the flap? Is there any printing on this? On this, on this, yeah,、uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One. yeah. I'm not sure. I'll have, I'll have to check it then.、Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I even have this far-fetching thing that somebody carry it over. I mean, unless we could pinpoint this, you all something, you all. This might even be a、uh, a handover from somebody over in China, hand it to、uh, you know somebody who is traveling to Hong Kong, and then send from Taipo. I mean, that that is another you know that.、Yeah. That could also happen because of that chop. Yeah, maybe. But I think、uh, in the new territories, for sure, there was quite a lot of this going on in the late thirties and forties, where they they had shopkeepers or village、uh, elder type society houses、uh, acting as mini post offices, and then. The local postman、uh, would pick up and deliver specifically to these shops. Absolutely agree, because back then there's a lot of people who 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 doesn't read or write. So you go to that shop and get somebody to write the letter for you and put it in the mail. One stop shop, you know. Yeah, and they probably put the stamp on. Sold the stamp, but then it it went to Typo、uh, branch post office, and then through to Central. It would be interest. It would be interesting to find more of these、uh, shop chops because very various places、uh, had them. As the the only means, I mean, Chateau Cop was、uh, for many years、uh, from a shop with a with a licensed、uh, vendor agent. I mean, in、uh, I think in one 
report that I read, it said that when they opened the post office, oh, hopefully not messing this up, uh, at Chateau Cop, then it took a, it took over from some guy. I can't remember the name of the shop, but it was a a shop. So it was quite prevalent. Anyway, we di we digress. Okay. Interesting, interesting though. Very. Right. Any more questions? Ah, oh, you're all still there, still awake. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. It's great uh, to see there's so many some early um, the markings are uh, which are. Uh, I wouldn't say very hard to find, but uh, it's certainly uh, well sought after by uh, collectors um, of, of Hong yeah. Kong. Uh, and uh, you know, one, one, when you when one sees uh, uh, one on on eBay, for example, it never goes cheap. <laughs> it's always no. a buyer. Someone else always buys those. Yeah, no, the V, especially the V sign. You know, I bet you notice that uh, you know there's uh, always uh, a few buyers, the same same buyers, and they keep buying them. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, I think it another example of we know quite a lot about this subject, but actually we don't know a lot no. too. <laughs> yes, yes. So I so I'm so glad that Simon has volunteered to to make a study of the design. He's he's the man for sure. He's the man. <laughs> do you think uh, uh, as, as, do you think that these actually the 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 the, the V the, the V slogan uh, were actually sent to enemy territories? Well, the, I mean, it was it was reported that uh, they stopped using the V chop after yeah. complaints in the UK from the German. Germans that uh, yeah. they didn't like them going to prisoners of war. Ah. Right. That that was. I don't, I've never, I've read that, but I don't know whether that's true. You know. <laughs> Stranger things have happened. Okay. Right. It was only it was only used for a very short period of time. Mm, mm, Why? Mm. It was just two weeks. Somebody objected. I guess. Yeah. Right. Well, they, got, they got fed up with chopping all these envelopes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, okay. So uh, thank you, Richard, uh, for for sharing with us. Um, since uh, there's so much uh, being said about the uh, the Hong Kong. Uh, Exhibitions of, of, of products. Uh, I might as well uh, show share a few things um, on this. Uh, it's more of a information uh, rather than actually something which is uh, uh, un unusual or or even expensive. Uh, but uh, you know, as, as you know, you can uh, let's see. Let's, let's uh, let me go to the full screen. Okay, right. So I'm I'm going to I'm going to talk about the uh, the uh, postal the slogans uh, especially designed uh, for the Hong Kong um, exhibitions of products. So a bit of background, you know, I I I I don't mean to write so much stuff, but I think you know for for our viewers, I think they might be interested to know to want to know that the background. Um, about the, why you have the uh, exhibitions of products. Um, it's to do with the at mainland in the 1930s, the mainland started to impose import tariffs leading to the Hong Kong manufacturers uh, exports facing major setbacks. So the CMA, which is the, uh, the Chinese Manufacturer Association, uh, began to explore the Southeast Asia market. And in fact, the first um, the, the show of uh, the, the Chinese products was, was held in Singapore 
uh, that was the, like the forerunner of the, the Hong Kong shows. Um, and, uh, and, it, and, the, and the later on, of course, the, uh, they began to um, introduce uh, local people uh, uh, to use local products. And still, to, still today, and then especially it's particularly apt to, to show something like that because right at this moment, there is an exhibition going on in Victoria Park. So, Edge, from um, the first exhibition in 1938 uh, to 1974, um, uh, there were 31 of them, uh, virtually one every year, usually at the end of the year. It's like um, December, January time. So, so the first exhibition was held in 1938, uh, co-organized by the, the, uh, the CMA for short, and the YMCA, um, and it was held in, in, in this St. Paul's College. I, I, I don't know whether you know if, if all of you have been, uh, uh, some of you have been in Hong Kong. Uh, remember where this is? Um, this is actually the, uh, uh, the so-called now called the Bishop's House, the new Bishop's House, and you can see on the right here is actually the Wynnum Street going down to Central, and, and this is uh, I think it's up by Albert Road or something. And this is the bishop's house, and behind the bishop's house uh, is a school, or is a school, and, and there's a, it's a playground. And then, not showing here, is called the Hong Kong Central Hospital, where I used to spend uh, uh, time, you know, uh, you know, killing patients. <laughs> so, um, so that is, is a very familiar place for me. And then you actually can see the sign here. There's a little sign here. Uh, uh, course in Paul's College, um, uh, uh, still on this wall. But this is where the, the first exhibition was uh, was held. So uh, the second exhibition uh, was held in uh, Wana Middle School, and uh, different there were different names. Uh, I think this this probably is correct. If you look, at it, I, I've got a Chinese newspaper cutting uh, from here, and it's actually say Wana Zhonghe. It's a it's a Wana Middle School. But there's some some say it's, it's a Namwa Middle School reported in, 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 the, in the English papers. So so this is a second exhibition uh, being held, was held in the Yaomati area. So and then in 1940 there were two uh, held in at Happy Valley and in Chimsa Chui. And then you see the Chinese newspaper cutting. The, the actually the government actually allowed. Um, actually lent the, the land uh, to the CMA to have a show. And then you, know, you, can, you can see, you know, this is the, the I'm sorry, it's a Chinese newspaper, but uh, it's it kind of uh, advertised uh, the show um, in, in the, this is the, the Happy Valley. Okay, so you can see, um, but where, where it was exactly, uh, uh, I'm not too sure, maybe it wasn't actually the race course, but somewhere around there. Um, and then you can you can it actually described yeah you know the the, the stores it was uh, uh, with, with canvas covered with a wooden frame canvas covered uh, and then you said the member of the CMA the the rental forty dollars and and non members fifty dollars um, right so uh, the fifth exhibition was planned for December twentieth nineteen forty one but was suspended. Due to, due to Japanese occupation, well, it's not, not quite occupation, but the, the West war is looming, uh, so uh, that was cancelled. So after the war, a few years after the war, and the sixth exhibition was held in 1948, and in, in Chimsa Chui. Now, uh, in Chimsa Chui, actually, that was, um, I think it was, um, I think it's Chris Norton was showing uh, a little uh, a label. Um, and 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 then I think Richard mentioned something about the the Sheraton. Uh, you know, this this is probably around the area. This is an old photograph of of the uh, of the seventh show, and you can see this this, this is uh, this, this is the the entrance of the exhibition here. And and then at the eighth exhibition, that's that's the label uh, of of Chris's. Uh, and then uh, all along with the label. There is, there, there is also a chop, a uh, rubber chop uh, um, uh, made by the, um, I think it's, 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 a, it's, it's the, the organizer chop rather than a post office. But uh, no, I haven't actually seen a cover. Uh, 
but I, I, I believe there might be one, maybe one or two. I mean, this is certainly, this is actually, is, is a photo from the, from a book, uh, but it actually it will show this piece, but not the complete cover. But uh, I, I, I must admit that uh, there must be at least one cover uh, bearing the, um, uh, the, the slogan chop here. So this was actually opened by the, the Hong Kong governor, Alexander Grantham, Grantham uh, and uh, it was Chim Sa Choi at the corner of Nathan Road and Salisbury Road. And then you can see this is the, it's clearly spelled uh, the eighth, uh, uh, it's called the China uh, uh, Exhibitions of Chinese Products. Okay, it's Chinese products. Okay, it's not, not quite, the name actually changed later to Hong Kong products, but this is, at this moment, it's still Chinese products. Okay, so from 1951 to 1973, and uh, then you have all different uh, venues. Uh, uh, of the, the ninth exhibition was in Chim Sa Choi, 10 11 in Chim Sa Choi, and then it moved to Central, uh, and then it, it moved back to Chim Sa Choi for, for the few exhibitions, and then it, it went to the old naval dockyard in Central, and then the, and obviously all these on borrowed the land, you see, so that if the government gave you a a piece of land that you uh, to hold the exhibition, uh, and the CMA uh, would take it. Uh, so I mean, this this is I I remember because uh, and, uh, I, I I think I was in one at least one of these shows um, in in Hong Kong in Kowloon. I think where where the where the um, I think they the future uh, the Cross Harbour Tunnel uh, you know site, and then certainly this is the reclaimed area in Wan Chai is where they actually uh, built the Cross Harbour Tunnel. Uh, and so um, why was it ended in 1973? Because the government uh, uh, did not uh, uh, lend any more land to the uh, to CMA, so the, the exhibition was stopped for a few years um, until 1998, until, no, sorry, until 1998. Uh, but uh, uh, in 1994, the 32nd show actually was renamed the Hong Kong International Products Expo. It was held at the Hong Kong uh, Convention and Exhibition Center um, in Wan Chai. So from the, from the 33rd to the 37th, uh, uh, it was held in, the, uh, in near the, the Tema, HMS Tema site in, in, in Central. And then afterwards, uh, 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 from 2002, uh, 2003 onwards, it's uh, being held in the Victoria Park, like the, the one uh, which is uh, being held at the moment, the, is the 56th show. So how the post office supported the exhibition, the uh, Hong Kong post office uh, supported the event by using a machine slogan uh, from the ninth exhibition in 1951 onwards until the 31st exhibition in 74, uh, for Frank King, local as well as overseas mail. Um, and you can see this, this is uh, a universal uh, machine um, and uh, universal can uh, stamp canceling machine operating GPO as well as the Kowloon branch. And then you can see uh, the, the, the design of the, 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 of the die head. And then you can see this is the date stamp die. And this is, this is the, uh, the, 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 the killer bars, obliterator bars die. So this part, this curved part, uh, will be uh, replaced by the slogan. Um, so it's a, actually it's a, it's a curved uh, design, uh, which actually apparently actually it costs quite a lot of money to make. Um, so only two machines. Uh, later on, maybe two more. Um, one machine in Hong Kong and one machine in in Kowloon. Uh, they were fitted with the uh, with, with the, uh, uh, the, the the slogan die. So this is, and you've probably seen this before in, in Chris's uh, display. So this is the, the ninth uh, uh, exhibition uh, slogan, and it's very simple uh, wording um, with, with the dates. And they were always used actually um, before the opening of the show. Okay, so you, you've got the, the Hong Kong GPOA date stamp, which is this one. And then, and then also use the Kowloon at, 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 the, at the another, at a, at also a similar date uh, with, a, with a Kowloon die. But the Kowloon obviously had more than one uh, a machine, so it was actually fitted into one machine. So that's why you see in, in Chris's display, you've got a uh, yeah yes, with, 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 uh, there was a cover with 
the one with one machine with the killer bars and the other one machine, the other machine, uh, the other impression with the uh, the slogan. So, so the post office also supports uh, the show by setting up a temporary post office uh, from the from the at the 12th to the 31st exhibition uh, between 1954 to 1974 uh, for, for mailing of ordinary registered letters and parcels. And uh, at first they used a, uh, a, 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 a so-called uh, makeup uh, a, a hand stamp. Uh, so actually you can actually fit, there were different holes um, uh, on this, on this, uh, on the, on the date stamp die, and you can put different letters. So if you can actually make up any words, uh, 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 so so make up any words by just by inserting different uh, letters. And so this is exhibition post office Hong Kong uh, with a star. And uh, I think Web actually mentioned about the star being a, a registered mail, and that, without the star is um, uh, for honorary mail. Um, but, but this is this is clearly, but well, okay, this is this is from Peter Sheck. <laughs> you can see, you can see. I mean, for those of you who collect for a drop branch office, probably recognize the writing. And this is called a skeleton date stamp. So the post office used this kind of date stamp um, at the temporary post office uh, at at the exhibition site. So this is the uh, some of the photos of the earlier uh, temporary post offices. This is supposed to be the I think it probably is 1954. I've been told is the is the 12 Expo, and this is the 69 uh, with a with actual proper structure here, and then you can see the, the post office and somebody mailing the inside exhibition brand. Okay, so 10th exhibition, fairly similar design, uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's actually actually it's quite interesting that this cover has a few post office back steps, so it's actually sent from the by the forces. Um, nothing, nothing unusual. Until later on, they uh, you know the the, the stamp is, is pretty much the same. Uh, you can see the slight variation of the of the arrangements of the of the twelve uh, exhibition. And exhibition. Okay. So the 12 exhibitions and they use a different uh, uh the new, as it's obviously this is a new die with the with the wording changed slightly. So you can see this this is uh, uh Hong Kong Hong Kong products and exhibition. Okay, and, and this this is um 12 exhibition of Hong Kong products, so slight slight different arrangement of words. So this is the 14th exhibition. Um, uh, this actually site is actually now today is the city hall. Okay, city hall is here. So you can see the, the, the cenotaph there and the, and, the, and the star ferry. You can see the star ferry here being built. And uh, this is the location of the, of the, uh, the this 14th expo in 1956. And this is actually looking uh, from the from the uh, um, uh, from from the harbor. Then you can actually see the uh, cable cable and wireless building, and uh, uh, you see the the old central, a bit very nostalgic. You can see the old beetle here. Uh, anyhow, so the 16th, 17th uh, exhibition, they started to introduce the CMA logo on, um, into the into the slogan. So this is uh, one has a, has a frame and the other hasn't got a frame. So this is changes in the design. So, so the venue of the 15th to 16th, they moved to Kim Sa Choi. And you, say, okay, that's, you can clearly see this is the, where uh, the Sheraton Hotel uh, is nowadays. And you can see the, uh, the, the this is the, um, uh, uh, well, this is Peninsula. Hotel, you can see the Peninsula Hotel here, uh, and and then there's a, there, there's a, there was a big building site, empty site, where uh, the exhibition, uh, where so the several exhibitions were held here before they actually built the, uh, they sold the land and and, and then built the the other other uh, thing, commercial buildings and Sheraton hotels. So 18th exhibition, a change of design again. Um, and and uh, it, it, it's got the new line called display of, display of industrial machinery and raw materials added. So it just gets more wordy. Okay. 
Now the 19th exhibition is the is the is the tragic, where it's scheduled the December the 5th to January the 8th, but a fire broke out on 7th of December at 4:20 p.m. Some says 4:15 p.m. on the Starlight Company. Uh, store on the 10th Street selling plastic goods. As you know, Starlight Company, I think it's still, uh, uh, I think it's still in business today, um, but they're selling a lot of uh, plastic goods, uh, buckets and whatnot, boxes and things like that. Um, the, uh, the, the firefighting equipment uh, were inadequate uh, at the venue. So um, the Royal Navy stepped in uh, to help putting out the fire. And uh, and uh, and uh, they, they put out the fire by about 5 p.m. Five, uh, and then 34 stores were destroyed. The exhibition was actually suspended uh, from the 7th onwards until the 19th, when when, when it was uh, the the the, the, uh, the devastated uh, buildings were the stores were rebuilt and then uh, reopened on the 20th December, and, and and it was it was closed on the 21st. And so the 8th of January. And you can see in the local newspaper, uh, you know, of the of the of the the the, the fire, you know, the, the, the smoke coming up from one of the stores. And then you can see a large area here of the of the of the of the uh, uh, the, the stores that were destroyed. And there's there's some a lot of water damage. To the to the to the to the other stores and and the, and the ground, right? Of course, obviously, uh, there's inquiry. Why there, there was a fire? And of course, uh, the uh, uh, in the lo local news, uh, the, the fire department said it's due to electrical uh, electrical fault. Um, uh, there was a transformer and uh, they had a short circuit. And then, and then it, it, it started uh, uh, sparks and burns that burned, burned the store. But of course, as usual, the Hong Kong Electric Company said that it's not the case. <laughs> it says Hong Kong Electric Company told the China Mail this morning, I don't believe the fire was caused by the electric short circuit. So there's always, always like that when there's inquiry and then you, you get the, uh, uh, you, you know, you you get the the the, 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 you know, the two sides of the story, but uh, this was uh, a lot, and then and then it becomes a uh, uh, there's a debate uh, in, in the in the news in the newspaper, you know, about uh, you know there there should be more safety precautions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, this is the Chinese uh, paper reporting. Uh, this is 34 it says 34 stores destroyed. Uh, and then, and then he talked about uh, what to do after the fire, etc. So uh, uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's it's well reported in the, the English and Chinese papers. So what happened? So the slogan says eight and uh, fifth of December to eighth of January, nineteen sixty-two. So what happened was the the post office actually, when it was reopened, is actually removed. The date from here, so you've got the bottom version here without the date. So this was actually used after the fire, and uh, and apparently the the eleventh of January uh, uh, is the is the first day of use of the uh, uh, the the the, 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 the well, not the new the, the uh, altered uh, uh, slogan. So it's uh, something actually quite interesting, and uh, uh, you probably find it, uh, uh, you know, in, 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 on eBay maybe, <laughs> or, or some some dealers, which are not. So uh, okay. So uh, for the twentieth and twenty-first exhibition, uh, the de uh, design similar except change the wording to numeral instead of the word, so it becomes. Uh, it's the 20th, it becomes the 21st, it's become an, an Arabic numeral instead. It's like this is very similar design. And the, the 25th, of course, is the Silver Jubilee, and they have a completely new designed a boxed slogan mark. Okay, used of course, used both in Kowloon and Hong Kong. This is an example used in Kowloon. 
And then this is the, the venue of the 25th uh, Silver uh, Jubilee Exhibition in Hong Kong. And uh, you see bright blue sky and uh, uh, so. Okay, from the 26th and the, to the 31st, I mean, it's, it's fairly similar with the Arabic New Worlds. And uh, this is the 31st, is the last uh, slogan produced by the post office since uh, it was the last exhibition hosted by the CMA and uh, uh, until many years later. So this is the central reference work, uh, the Hong Kong slogan cancels the, the book. Uh, aside from the exhibition slogans, we also got all the early other slogans too. Uh, it was uh, uh, it was produced by the, uh, the uh, local philatelic, the China Philatelic Association, assisted by the Hong Kong Post Office in 1993, and it was printed by the government and was actually was given up free at the Hong Kong uh, 1994 Asian International Stamp Exhibition. So uh, I remember there were there were piles of them. Of the books and they were just given up free and, and said, um, uh, but uh, you know what happened to them? I think it, it's pretty hard to find a copy nowadays. So uh, uh, this is the Silver Jubilee. Uh, this, is the, the, this is the Tamer site, uh, HNS Tamer site, uh, uh, with the 33rd Expo here. Uh, you can see that the, the buildings still are still around nowadays. Uh, you can see the HNS Tamer site. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the, the latest, uh, the 56th exhibition just opened recently, and this is uh, one of the VIP tickets, and you can see uh, lots of sponsors, and, uh, and then there's also a, uh, a public voting for the Top Brands Award. I'll just make a tick here and put this uh, uh, slip back into the box and put your name down, and there's a lucky draw. And you get top service brand awards as well as the uh, uh, Miss Exhibition pageant, see, which is a uh, pageant, uh, Miss Exhibition pageant, um, uh, 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 being held at the same time. So, anyway, thank you for thank you for watching and listening. Um, I'm sure that uh, it's just just a brief history of the uh, Hong Kong uh, Hong Kong uh, exhibitions of products, and um, and it, it brings back a lot of old, old memories. I mean, into some of these exhibitions, uh, it's 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 pretty awesome. I mean, there are lots of shops and uh, and always a lot of people hunting for bargains, etc. So uh, yeah, thank you very much for for listening. Uh, okay, good. Any questions? <laughs> Probably not. I'm standing. Yes. Thank okay. you, Doctor. Yes. PM. Can't see your face. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, still sitting here. Yeah. I, I think PM is going to show us some this. Uh, oh. Very good. I, very I, good. I, okay. I don't think so. No? I no? uh, my preparation is very bad and I oh, you're the slogan king to share <laughs> with a technical problem. So we maybe next time. Okay, okay. okay. Like suspend. Oh, All <laughs> right, 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 right. I always remember when we when I lived in Hong Kong, I came to, I think it was one of the few show and tells specific meetings. And I always remember that BM arrived. With and he said, Oh, I brought some modern slogan cancel covers. You, you may remember, Andrew. Mm. And he brought a room full. <laughs> <laughs> there were so many. It was just unbelievable. Well, he That's, has a room full. <laughs> yeah, I know. If, you, if, you go, if you go to his apartment, you can see <laughs> the whole, whole apartment is full of boxes. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. It's an awesome collection. Yeah. He is Anyhow. the slogan king. Yeah. yeah. Well. <laughs> okay. So all uh, right. Um I think I think um uh, without further ado, I think uh, uh, as time is actually running out, uh, I think um I think Simon has a few things to show, right? 
Uh, yes, right. And uh, okay, yeah. Okay. Why don't uh, you start sharing the screen? Right. Okay. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. Um, this is uh, not not a very uh, important or very uh, serious uh, one uh, related to postal research or anything valuable. Uh, it's, it's just a, a easy topic uh, for uh, uh, those who started to collect stamps or first day covers. And then these are the things that I, I started uh, my philatelic uh, journey. Okay. Um, I, as suggested by Andrew, I, I try to put together some, something uh, uh, from a perspective of a thematic show. So I selected the topic promotion marks uh, by Hong Kong Urban Council exhibitions. And um, yeah, the Urban Council uh, was a municipal council responsible for the services on Hong Kong Island and Kowloon. And uh, it established more than 100 years ago. And uh, in, 1883 uh, established as the sanitary board, and then uh, in 1936 it was renamed as the Urban Council. And in 1973, um, there was some uh, change of the constitution, and the Urban Council was separated from the government body as an independent organization. And uh, the Urban Council premises, in, in fact, were important places for exhibitions, in, including STEM. Exhibitions, postal issue ex exhibition, and, and, and exhibitions on other topics. And the venues include the Hong Kong City Hall, the uh, Museum of History, the Science Museum, Space Museum, etc. And uh, the first one, the 1962 Hong Kong Stamp Centenary Exhibition. Um, it, it, uh, yeah, it, the first purpose is to commemorate the centenary of the first issuing of stamps in Hong Kong and also the opening of the City Hall in that year. And this is the booklet uh, for, for the STEM exhibition. And inside the booklet, um, there is uh, uh, the names of some people, which uh, I think uh, uh, most of you are familiar with, like uh, her mother, N.C. Young, G. Evans, uh, uh, John Shaw, etc. And uh, also, uh, there is a uh, a plan of the exhibition hall. Uh, this is the, the lower block of the city hall, and uh, there, there, there was some uh, displays uh, and uh, for the exhibition and the royal exhibit, and also a post office over here. And also, uh, according to the to the book, um, one of the display uh, in fact uh, was uh, a painting of, of the uh, jubilee stamps. Okay, uh, the post office sponsored the exhibition by issuing a special postmark or special day stamp and, and also set up a temporary post office inside City Hall for, for this event. And you can see the first day, December the 8th, and the last day, December the 16th. And a registered, cover, a registered service and, and parcel service and uh, in fact were, were offered. The second one, the 1966 British Week in Hong Kong exhibition, uh, it was not related to uh, 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 stamps or postal history. In, in fact, uh, this Hong Kong Week uh, was one of the activities to, to, to welcome the visit by Her Royal Highness Princess Margaret uh, visiting Hong Kong, and also to promote British products and services, including machinery, fashion, movie, football, horse racing, musical performance, silverware, cars, books, historic and, and, and news photos. And uh, on the right side, um, it, it is the booklet for, for, for the event. And uh, yeah, that, that's uh, some sort of uh, slogan by British style and court. And also a temporary post office was set up at City Hall and also with a, a specially designed uh, day stamp. And also uh, the, the souvenir covers were produced for, for the event. And, uh, and, and, I have, and then that's an example for, for label, this one. Two different types of uh, postmark. You can see the 
the left and the right are slightly different. Really? Yeah, you can see the space I, of the. I, I didn't notice it. No, well, you can see that the, the spacing of the British and the, the and the and the square and the, and the uh, the frame of the date the date frame. Oh right, yeah. You can see right. one one's are slightly higher than the other. Uh, yeah. Ah, maybe maybe one one for the ordinary mail and one for the registered mail. That could maybe be two counters. Yeah, it's just two two counters, and yeah. Oh, okay. And then, uh, yeah, that 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 there was a cancellation die with the slogan "British Week in Hong Kong," and uh, it was <coughs> used in uh, uh, one one in one machine in Hong Kong and another one machine in Kowloon from January thirteenth to March twelfth. These are the two examples. And then another one, another exhibition is the 1969 Festival of Hong Kong STEM exhibition. And uh, it was jointly organized by Hong Kong Philatelic Society and, and the CPA. And uh, according to, to, to some uh, information on the internet, uh, there, there were 120 counters for exhibiting wholesale items, seven stores for STEM vendors or STEM dealers, and one temporary post office. And the first day covers, bulletins, and Christmas cards were shown in the exhibition. Um, the bottom uh, one is yeah, this is, is, is the uh, booklet uh, for, for, for the exhibition, the cover. And then uh, this one is the, um, the cancellation, the machine cancellation with, with, with the slogan code mark for, for Hong Kong Festival. And uh, yeah, these two are the uh, covers, the, the, the so when the covers for, for the event are uh, having the temporary post office postmark the first day on 9th and the last day on the 14th of December of 1969. And uh, yeah, and there was a label, a festival of Hong Kong. Also, also slightly different. The, the mm. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the next, STEM exhibition uh, was the 1971 festival, festival of Hong Kong exhibition. And uh, yeah, there, there was also a machine cancellation uh, with, with the slogan postmark. Uh, this is the uh, book lab for the, for the show. And uh, the show, uh, the exhibition was held uh, at Kowloon Park. Um, yeah, um, this one shows Shows that uh, yeah the, the exhibition was also organized by the two philatelic societies the HKPS and the CCPA. Um, yeah, there, there, there was a temporary post office set up in Town Park for, for, for the event. And uh, yeah, you can also see from the names of the executive committee uh, the the familiar names like uh, a mother and then. This this one A Ocean. I I'm not sure whether uh, it was our, our ex committee. Uh... Yeah, EXO. Oh, yes, EXO. Okay. Yeah, the ex editor. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and John Shaw, uh, CL Riding. Uh, yeah, he he was in Hong Kong. Uh, uh, Chris Riding was in Hong Kong at that oh. time uh, before he retired uh, uh -huh. back to the UK, and uh, he became the editor of the Hong Kong Study Circle uh, Journal. For, oh, okay. Okay, that's good. And also Mrs. C, uh, Chris Riding. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, the, the right one, the, the, this souvenir cover, uh, in fact, was having uh, the name of the two so Philatelic societies at the back, and uh, the Hong Kong Philatelic Society and also the China Philatelic Association. Uh, yeah, they, 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 uh, that, they, the names of the two Philatelic societies are on the back of this cover. And uh, in fact, uh, there is another design uh, of, of this souvenir cover, yeah, this one, and usually, and uh, in, in, in uh, yeah, for for the, for the whole period, uh, except this one, uh, the, the previous one on the first day, are uh, my examples uh, uh, for this exhibition uh, having the days from the second day to the last day in uh, uh, of this designs uh, a more simple design, just with the red ball, and these are. All Customized or uh, handmade covers by, by some collectors, and also uh, having the label, the Hong Kong Festival, Festival Hong Kong uh, label in orange. 
and then the 1973 one um, in uh, City Hall, and also there was a temporary post office uh, with a, a special designed uh, base stamp, uh, the first day and the last day. Okay, and then it, it, it uh, comes to the 1974 Urban Council or the Urbco uh, exhibition. And because uh, of the reconstitution of the Urban Council in, in 1993 as a, an independent body, uh, it uh, tried to promote uh, it, its scope of responsibility and, 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 and organize a lot of activities and events and shows and exhibitions in, in, in 1994. And uh, yeah, of course, as everyone knows that the, the, the Urban Council was responsible for keeping Hong Kong clean, responsible for the sanitation and hygiene, the markets, hawkers, parks, museum, swimming pools, and, and beaches. And uh, in fact, the Hong Kong Post Office uh, issued a, a cancellation die with the slogan, Earth Code 74. Okay, and then it comes to the uh, 80s, uh, 1983 Urban Council Centenary. Yeah, and at that time, uh, Urban Council was uh, running uh, several museums already. Uh, uh, for example, like the Space Museum, uh, where shows, displays, and exhibitions were organized regularly and thematically about space for astronomy. And the Urban Council was also playing a major role in community life and actively involved in performing arts and exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And um, so in 1983, uh, as one of the activities to celebrate the, the centenary of Urban Council, there was a stamp exhibition in the Museum of, Museum of History, newly moved it from a Starlight Star House to Howland Park. But uh, for that stamp exhibition, there was no temporary post of set up. And uh, the Urban Council, in fact, uh, issued a, a special souvenir cover for, for, for the event. And this is uh, the card inside the cover with the photo of the uh, Museum of uh, History uh, at Covenant Park. And this is the uh, promotional mark of the stamps exhibition. Next year, there was another stamp exhibition with the name a stamp is born. Uh, also uh, held in the Museum of History at Covenant Park. And uh, there was no temporary post office set up. And um, first they cover from the Museum of History and uh, with the promotional mark, a stamp is born. Uh, this is part of the card inside the envelope and uh, the promotional mark. In 1987, uh, there was another postal uh, history uh, exhibition uh, with a specific topic of the war years, 1941 to 1945. Uh, it was held also in, in the Museum of History at Covenant Park. And uh, this is the cover issued by the Urban Council. And uh, the information inside the cover and the promotional mark inverted triangle, like the sensor mark. In 1991, um, the post office celebrated uh, its 150 years of public service in Hong Kong and to commemorate uh, the event, uh, uh, there was an exhibition held in the Museum of History at Covenant Park. And uh, the post office uh, prepared a special souvenir cover for the event and also a special postmark. And also, um, there was a slogan cancellation on machines. In 1993, the Urban Council celebrated its 110th anniversary. And uh, the government, uh, uh, the post office issued a, a, a slogan machine cancellation with, uh, with the words Urban Council 110 and then uh, 1883 to 1993. And uh, I've seen uh, mails from Urban Council and Urban Services Department uh, using uh, a, a double oval, a kind of uh, uh, 
uh, mark uh, with uh, red lines uh, and also the, the, the 110 uh, uh, numeric uh, in green in the center. Like that piece, like, like the one on, on these two covers. And uh, in 1993, uh, in fact, there was a, a set of commemorative stamps in Hong Kong Science and Technology uh, issued, and it uh, coincided with the uh, anniversary of every council. And so the, the Science Museum issued the first day cover, and also with, with the special uh, OFO promotional mark and also uh, another one uh, in circle and reaching city line. Um, this one uh, this another exhibition uh, in the Hong Kong Science Museum. Uh, uh, its topic is about dinosaur. And uh, yeah, there is a promotional mark uh, with a drawing of a dinosaur. And uh, basically, uh, this ends my show because uh, afterwards, uh, most of the exhibitions, especially those stems uh, for philatelic related exhibitions, in fact, uh, were held in, in, in the Hong Kong Convention Exhibition Center, like the uh, 94 or 97 Hong Kong stamp Acts. And uh, yeah, I, I'm going to stop uh, my sharing and uh, thank you for listening and watching. Thank you, uh, very, it's great that the actual Urban Council has uh, so many produced so many commemorative covers and um, and and uh, it's quite a lot of stamp exhibitions um, uh, that you, you you showed us. Uh, I even what was the you 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 assignment you you show one with the uh, the, the war years uh, yes. 1945 to uh, 1941 to 1945 at the Kowloon Park. Yeah. Uh, what was that? Uh, was that was a war theme, or you know what what was what, what was being shown? Um, the Japanese occupation of Hong Kong uh, materials, in fact, uh, are purchased by the uh, Museum of History. Uh, most of those exhibits or the items, in fact, were the exhibitor shed mm. uh, uh, collection. And in fact, um, I think that was the only chance that. I've mm -hmm. seen um, the actual items of the Peter Shack collection owned yes. by the Museum of History. Afterwards, all those materials uh, were mm -hmm. digitized. And yeah. what you can see, even if you write or, or make an appointment with the Museum of History, what you can see are, are, are just images on the screen. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you, you will never know whether the real items <laughs> are, are still <laughs> exist or not. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I think it's, a, it's about time that uh, the uh, is it the Museum of History? Uh, yeah, it is. Show it, it, that um, mm. again. I mean, the, the real items. So maybe uh, they can. I, I've never seen it again. In, in never seen it again. Yeah, you, you know, there's a there's a Museum of Coastal Defense in uh, in Shaoqi Wan, right? Museum of Coastal. Uh, yeah, 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 right. Which Coastal also Defense. is a part of the, a branch of the the. Hong Kong Museum of History. Oh, yes, right. And you know, I think I think that what they should do is have to have a permanent exhibition in that uh -huh. area, which is quite appropriate for for mm. this kind of material instead right, of hiding right. it in the in the vault. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Maybe, maybe someone can 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 uh, make some suggestions to 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 the uh, to the government. The yeah, I think I think yeah. that's that's the that's the really good. Uh, it's like any postal museum in the world. Uh, uh, you know, they have a permanent display of the italic material mm -hmm. uh, in, in, instead of just uh, uh, sort of posters and pictures uh, telling a story. You know, right. it's, it's, it's uh, you know, uh, particularly that, that uh, the Coastal Defense Museum has got the, a permanent display of the, like the early history, the opium wars and things yeah, like that, yeah. uh, up to Japanese occupation. So I, right. I think uh, they, they should spare a corner or spare room. In fact, they should spare room to, to show the, mm -hmm. the italic material. Otherwise, it is all all be, all will be waste, wasted actually sitting in the vault. Well, uh, but but the, the location uh, of that uh, museum of coastal defense uh, <laughs> is a little bit too too it's out of the way, right? Yeah, countryside. I would say I, I remember in, in one year a few years ago when when there was a typhoon, a very uh, uh, having strong wind and rains, and and in fact it destroyed a part of that museum. 
And I'm not sure where, where it was, uh, it reopened again. So uh, I'm not sure where, whether it, it is an appropriate place for, for exhibition of the entire <laughs> process. <laughs> No, it is it's a, it's, it's a remarkable place, but they, it's, it's a long way to walk from uh, the, the, the uh, uh, yeah, yeah. one NTR oh, oh. station. Uh, yeah. Uphill. yeah, and then maybe 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 underground you 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 may uh, find uh, the the um, legendary South Chi South Chi one uh, pre pre war cancel. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there were lots, lots of rooms, you know, for, for yeah, lots of uh, little, little, sort of uh, the holes and things for storing uh, yeah. ammunitions and things like that. Uh, so actually, is a working, uh, uh, um, you know, a gun battery. So it's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, a very yeah. interesting place. Anyway, good. Okay. Um, so, if anybody got anything to show or just any remarks? Uh, anything, John. John, are you going to show something? <laughs> well, anyway, uh... um, I I uh, wanted to just say that I I did have a little collection of slogans, but I didn't. I ran out of time to put it together. Maybe uh, in the new year, I'll do a little show. There's a group of slogans from the mid 1960s to the late 1970s that are also to do with uh, urban council and promotion of Hong Kong, um, uh, like stay clean and, and all kinds of stuff like that and uh, international tourist year 1967. And I find of all the slogans, these are the hardest ones to find because um, when I looked up the CPA book, uh, which uh, you showed there, um, um andrew that some of them had only like one week of mm. time to be mm. shown so that's why they're so scarce yeah and yeah. and i have a little collection of them but like i said i didn't have time mm. to get it together for this show but well, maybe in the future i will because oh, it's uh, always january you can do a show and yeah. tell show yeah. and tell yeah, yeah Engel, yeah. I, I i share your your, your, your same observation uh, in fact yeah i i also opined that um the, the, the postmarks or slogans during that period uh, from the early 70s to, to, to maybe the, the uh, early 80s, in fact, are very difficult to find, it, including also the branch office cancellations. Um, my, my theory is, is that uh, those collectives, including Peter Shad, uh, uh, Evans, uh, G, they, they were all uh, emigrated uh, to, to other countries. They, 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 in fact, were not in, in Hong Kong already. And so, uh, and, and, and the new breed of collectors like uh, Andrew Cheung, uh, BM Wong, uh, I'm not sure where, where they were at that time, but, but in fact, they, they, they will not like, <laughs> like to share or, or even no, no, no. Well, it was a revelation to, to study them as I was trying to prepare the, them for show and tell of how short a time they were used for. Some were a month, some were a week, Mm. It was it was very short time. Good. Good. Well, we look forward to your presentation next month, uh, Ingo. Well, just let me know if you're ready. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Um, right. Um, any, any more remarks? Any anything else? All right, okay. Well, in that case, um, I'd like to say uh, thank you to for all of you. Um, you know, all, yeah, I mean, uh, most of you have actually attended all the, the Zoom meetings in, in this year. And um, I'm so grateful for, you know, the, particularly to, to, to Simon and Richard. Uh, and uh, I think Frank's been here all, you know, every month. <laughs> Uh, Engel as well, uh, and Sam. You know, I, I see him, you know, most of the time, and uh, and and Vincent. Um, so, uh, well, thank you very much uh, for attending. I'm sure that uh, we will have uh, another exciting year. Uh, uh, you know, coming up uh, with with more more topics to discuss. Um, and uh, may I just like to wish you all a merry Christmas and a happy new year and uh, maybe stay out of the cold and play with your stamps. <laughs> okay, well, it's uh, good night for me.
and uh, good afternoon and yeah, good evening and uh, good, good morning from you all. Well, okay. Yeah. So, good afternoon. Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas and happy Merry Christmas. Yeah. Merry, Christmas. Merry, Christmas. Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Yeah. Happy holidays. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Bye bye. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.